Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we are going to talk about independence of two continuous random variables in this lecture. Okay? So, we will just see the result and then see how to uh, you know picture some independent continuous random variables, how they look etc. Okay? So, here is the result, the main result is if you have x and y having a joint density f x y of x comma y, two jointly continuous random variables, they are independent if the joint density becomes the product of the marginal densities. f x y of x comma y should be equal to f x of x times f y of y. If that condition is satisfied, the two random variables x and y are said to be independent. Okay? They are statistically independent if this happens. Okay? So, notice uh, to determine indep independence, you need the joint density. right? Why is that? Because joint density is given, you can compute the marginals from it. right? Once you compute the marginals, you check if it is the product of the marginals. If that is true, then x and y are independent. But more interestingly, if you know ahead of time that x and y are independent random variables, the marginals are enough. If you have the marginals, you can find the joint density. If you know x and y are independent, that is very important. Quite often people forget that assumption. We happily go ahead and assume x and y are independent and multiply the marginals to get the joint distribution. But remember that you are making an assumption there an assumption that x and y are independent and in some cases it may not be true and it can come back and cause some difficulty for you. Okay? So, if you know they are not independent, do not go ahead and multiply the marginals. The multiplication of marginals is true only when x and y are independent random variables. Okay? So, a whole bunch of examples, uh, I do not know if I if am going to work these examples out in great detail for you. Uh, I, I did the marginal computation for it, uh, you can go back and check. Uh, so, you will see that I will just write down the result. So, uniform on unit square is independent. Okay? So, this one is not independent. 1 by 3, 0, 4 is independent. Okay? So, this one is not independent. Okay? So, this one is not independent and this guy is also not independent. So, from the support, right, from the support itself, you can sort of guess whether it is independent or not. Look, notice the support here. So, if you look at uniform on the unit square, right, from the support, when as x varies for given a value of x, the distribution of y remains the same, it does not change at all, right. Whatever value of x you give me, the distribution remains the same. But notice this case, this case the support ends up being like this. And depending on value of x, the distribution of y can change, right? So the marginal, like the change is dependent on. So clearly, this will not be independent. So what about this one? One, three, zero, four. It had a support like this. So once again, even though it has a, uh, when it notice, it's just one rectangle. One rectangle is a big giveaway uh, in uniform distributions. So as you vary x, no matter where x is, the distribution of y remains the same. Of course, you have to worry only within the support. Outside of the support, doesn't matter. Okay. So, within the support, uh, so you see as you vary x, the distribution of y does not change. Okay? So, you can go back and check the other ones. I mean, whenever you have x plus y, etc., it is very unlikely, uh, you know, things are going to be uh, independent, right? When you do not have a rectangular shape or when you have x and y occurring inside the definition of the, when you have a non-uniform distribution, it is, I mean, you, you have to really multiply the marginals to make them independent, otherwise it is difficult to see. Okay. So, quick examples just to show you how to do it. Go through these in some more detail if you, if you, if you think this came a little too fast for you, uh, but this is very important. Okay. So, so, the structure of how the support looks, support itself may give you a hint on whether the random variables are independent or not. Okay. Okay. Here is one problem, I will work out this alone because this is a little bit interesting. Okay. So, here is x and y given as exponential random variables. Remember what this exponential random variable f x of x is lambda 1 e power minus lambda 1 x for x greater than 0 and f y of y is uh, lambda 2 e power minus lambda 2 x y uh, y greater than 0. That is what it is. They are independent random variables. Once they are independent random variables, you can find their joint density. Okay, so, the joint density is easy to write down because they are independent. You can simply multiply the marginals. So, it will be lambda 1 e power minus lambda 1 x times lambda 2 e power minus lambda 2 y 
and uh, x is uh, greater than 0 and y is also greater than 0. So, so, this is very interesting, right. So, once you know they are independent, given the marginals, you can simply multiply, okay. So, you will see how the, you know, the joint density will look if they are independent. Now, the probability that is being asked here is probability that x is greater than y. So, it is sometimes it is good to sketch this x and y probability that x is greater than y. So, you have the x equal to y line and you want this probability, right. So, this is what you want. So, probability of x greater than y. So, it is a region inside the 2D plane. So, you have to integrate uh, first from for, for x, x goes from 0 to infinity, right, all the values of x. And once you fix a particular value of x, this is x equal to y. So, this is also x and y will go only from 0 to x, okay. So, y is 0, y goes to x, right. So, you take those slices and you will get y goes from 0 to x and then just this uh, lambda 1 e power minus lambda 1 x, lambda 2 e power minus lambda 2 y dy dx, okay. So, you do this integral first treating x as a constant. So, this will come out, okay. So, you will only have this guy floating around. So, that will end up being x equals 0 to infinity lambda 1 e power minus lambda 1 x, okay. And then this one lambda 2 e power minus lambda 2 y is just, you know, e power minus minus e power lambda 2 y uh, evaluated between 0 and x, okay. So, this dx and that will end up being uh, 0 to infinity lambda 1 e power minus lambda 1 x, okay. So, this will be uh, 1 minus e power minus lambda 2 x, okay dx. You see that? So, this this integral, the, in, the integral of this uh, indefinite integral of that is e minus e power minus lambda 2y. So, if you differentiate it, you will get this, right. So, you see that you differentiate minus e power minus lambda 2y, you are going to get lambda 2 times e power minus lambda 2y. So, that is the indefinite integral. So, you have to just substitute that between 0 and x. I did that a bit fast, okay. So, but you can do it uh, step by step, you will get, okay. So, now this uh, this integration is going to go, so we can multiply this out. So, it is 0 to infinity lambda 1 e power minus lambda 1 x dx minus integral 0 to infinity lambda 1 e power minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 x dx, okay. So, the first integral is just 1. So, this is just 1. This is just a valid PM PDF we are integrating over the entire range. So, you will get 1. Uh, this one needs a little bit of work, okay. So, what you can do here is uh, find the indefinite integral of this guy. Uh, this one will end up being, you know, the integral will end up being integral will end up being uh, minus e power minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 x by lambda 1 plus lambda 2. This is what the indefinite integral will work out being and then you have to substitute between 0 and infinity. You will just get 1 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So, this will end up being 1 minus lambda 1 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2, okay. So, so notice how this integral worked out. Uh, think about it as e power minus some constant into x. The integral is indefinite integral is this. You have to substitute values between 0 and infinity here. You will get 1 by lambda 2, 1 plus lambda 2, okay. So, of course, lambda 1 is still there. So, that shows up here, it is 1 minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2, it is lambda 2 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So, it is a nice answer, is not it? I, I like the final answer. It is, uh, I mean, you have to go through the integration for it a little bit, but the final answer is really, really, really neat. Uh, two exponential distribution marginals uh, being independent and you get the, you know, joint density and you want to compute probability that x is greater than y, the answer is lambda 2 by lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So, notice how independence makes things uh, very easy from the marginals, you can go to the joint, okay. So, that concludes this lecture on independent random variables. Uh, you will see quite often uh, independence is a very, very simplifying property and quite often when you do not know enough about the random variables, you might as well assume they are independent, okay. So, in practice many, many models will assume independence first and see if something is violated. If something is violated, you go back and try and fix the independence, but otherwise generally people try to assume independence as much as possible and hope for the best, okay. It might be a dangerous thing to do as we have seen before, but it makes for very easy and nice calculation, okay. Thank you very much.